What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with the second injury report of the week. It is Thursday, so it's officially week seven, man. We got Thursday night football tonight. I know the NBA is rolling. I was watching the end of that Pistons game. I know I said in the video, check out the Pistons game, but at the same time, when I uploaded the video, the Pistons game was over. I'm sorry. That was just weird timing, uh, but shout out to everybody that watched the video. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Pistons lost, but hey, it was a good game. There was a lot of good games. That one went to double overtime. Okay, why are we talking about basketball? We got some Lions, dudes. We have some Ram updates as well. So let's get this started. Up, we're going to bite a kneecap off and we're going to stand up and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're going to be the last one standing. And welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And Thursday's a, Thursday's a really good day for the injury report. Here's why Thursday's a good day. We get to hear from the Lions coordinators, all right? Th those two I really look forward to each week. Because I like listening to both of them. Aaron Glenn's is usually much longer. He gives you a really good take on a lot of different things. He answers a lot of questions into pretty deep detail. Like Dan Campbell. So I love listening to Aaron Glenn. And Anthony Lynn, he'll give you some of those small little nuggets that you really got to pay attention to. Because he'll give you some insight on what, what we could see going forward with our offense. So we got to hear from those two guys today. We have a few notes from both of them. And we also have the Lions side of the injury report. Now I'm not going to lie with you. I don't have the Ram side as of this very second, but it should be coming out any any second now. It should be coming out pretty soon. So I'm going to save that. I may cut to it, all right, and then we'll take a look at the Ram side. But we know it's probably not going to be very long. Yesterday, there really wasn't much there. So it probably shouldn't take that long to get through it, okay? But let's just focus on the Detroit Lions first. Let's just dive right into this injury report. All right, by the way, I know it's late. Happy late birthday to H-Man, Herman Moore. Shout out to Herman Moore, man. We appreciate you. Happy birthday, man. Hey, now we're, we're going to give him a shout out in the live stream. By the way, speaking of live stream, we're going to be live tonight on last second dose, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So I got to get this video out there. And we'll be doing a little bit of a preview for this Lions-Ram game. May dive into some film, possibly as well. So it should be a pretty good show tonight. Make sure you guys stop in. But let's get into this injury report because the Lions got some very good news today. I would say across the board, I mean, we've just improved. Just guys coming back to practice, guys practicing more. It was a good day on the practice front for the Lions. So let's take a look at it. All right, here's the injury report from Thursday in the left. The bottom left is kind of small. It's Wednesdays if you guys want to compare. But as you can see, there's a lot of greens on this list. And you know what the greens mean? It means you improved, okay? The greens are great. We got no reds. Love it. Oh, actually, only two of these names are staying are staying with the you know the white slash silver. So I loved it. All right, let's start at the top. Jason Gabinda, the Detroit Lions fullback, returned to practice today. It was the first time we saw him on this report all year, but he has returned today. Limited participation, and I think it's going to be very important to have him back, especially with the run game. We did have him last week, but we struggled to run the ball last week. And after listening to Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator for the LA Rams, he knows the importance of the Lions of rushing the football. And Dan Campbell yesterday saying that we have to be able to keep the run game alive throughout the entirety of the game, but we also need to find effectiveness and find success with it because last week we just did not. And Kabinda's probably going to be a part of that. Plus, I, I just think Kabinda has something to offer in the pass game as well. Some of those play action, rollouts, things like that. Maybe the Lions could utilize him there a little bit more, but there's a lot of versatility in Kabinda. And I think this offseason, he kind of showed us that. But either way, he returned to practice. TJ Hawkinson, good news there as well. He returned to practice today in limited fashion. Before we get too far into this, because Anthony Lynn was asked about the guys that are maybe limited or aren't practicing the full week and what that means heading into a game because it's been brought up a few times I think it started by Dan Campbell who said yeah you know they missed a little bit of practice so they may have been a little off with some of their timing where they need to be and Anthony Lynn addressed that today for the guys that don't practice as much during the week we're going to look to put less on their plate no matter who and he said look it's not just TJ Hawkinson because he, he's kind of the obvious one right he's missed uh, the first Wednesday practice now for the last three weeks that includes this week uh, so he's missed a lot of those Wednesdays and that actually is where the talk I think started with I think think with Tisha Hawkinson missing the Wednesday practice, but he missed this week's Wednesday as well. He did return today, which is good news. Again, I'm not worried about his availability right now. He was in the media presser yesterday. We got to hear from him there and today he returned to practice. So it's good news. I think we're in a good spot with Hawkinson, but again, he did miss some practice. According to Anthony Lynn, it may look to take a little bit off of some of these guys' plates, no matter who it is. But as we know, Hawkinson is well, it's one of the biggest threats we have, especially in the passing game. Plus, we ask him to do a lot 
in the rushing game. And Hawkinson also talked about that missed pass. I know we're going way back here, but that third down play. And he said, me and Jared Goff were just on different pages. He saw something, I saw something else. So maybe that has something to do with it. Definitely something to look out for again this week. But I guess the good news overall is that he's back in practice and you know he's going to be super involved. All right, continuing. Another guy returned to practice. This is Nick Williams, the Lions defensive line, showing some health here. I love it. Okay, Michael Brockers next up as well, full participation. Last week, he came off the injury report by the end of the week. We saw some full participation for the first time this year, I think, last week. And now he's back to that side with full participation. But he also practiced yesterday in limited fashion. Nick Williams did not practice yesterday. He returned. So the Lions getting some body backs on the defensive line. But, I mean, we're seeing a rotation there anyway, right? Nick Williams rotating with Levi. We have McNeil mixing it. We have Penasini playing kind of that nose tackle position. We got depth at the defensive line. Plus, we talked about it yesterday, Deshaun Hand returning to practice. We have Kevin Strong, who's still working his way back. Neither of these guys have been taken off of IR yet, so that'll be something to just kind of wait for. But it is good news. Our defensive line is in a good spot right now. And plus, it's easy to forget, Jason Cornell's here, and Cornell can be activated. So you still have that guy as well, who's come off the suspension. I don't even know if we've seen him yet this season. We got depth on the D-line, and we got some good players there, as that's been the unit that's been probably the most steady unit, honestly, on this entire team all season. And specifically these last couple weeks, you've seen some of these young guys really step up. Continue to roll through here. Trey Flowers, once again, did participate in practice, but he stayed at that limited participation. Flowers, you ruined it, man. We had all these greens going, and you couldn't get back to full participation. Now, the good thing is, though, he's practiced both days. So that's good. I think, it's, I think a lot of it is about practicing every day. But the good thing is, I will say with a guy like Hawkinson, is that he was there at practice yesterday from what we know. With Jason Cabinda, he was there at practice. He just wasn't in pad. I do think part of it, being at practice is good rather than missing the entire day in practice and not showing up. But being able to be there even if you can't participate. But there is nothing like getting on the field and getting the timing down, especially when you get to like specific plays that you want to run during the week. Charles Harris, he also improved. He went from limited. It was day, day to day is what Dan Campbell told us after Sunday's game. Well, he's improved to full participation today. By the way, the Lions practiced indoors. The front seven, we're getting a lot of good news here. Will Harris, full participation today. Yesterday was limited. I think it was the first time we saw him on the report this season, but that's back up to full participation in no time. And of course, cap it off with DeAndre Swift. Man, this dude's always limited. Come on, Swift. You got to pull Michael Brockers and give us the full participation. Please? No? Maybe not. Okay, it's fine. He's been playing every week. He's one of those guys that, yeah, he's limited, uh, but I think they're just taking care of him, right? They're taking care of the groin injury that was Wow, I mean, we got to go way back for that. But either way, he's been playing every week, so I don't have a lot of concerns there. But either way, I mean, you look at this injury report, it's just a lot of good news. Really across the board, just a lot of good news with the Lions, a lot of improvements there. So that's that's good heading into, of course, a big week, all right? And we're going to talk about that in tonight's video. But I do want to talk about a couple of notes that I have from some of our coordinators today, and then we'll take a look at the Rams side. Anthony Lynn first, the Lions offense coordinator. Like I said, he gives you some little nuggets sometimes that you can look for. He did talk about Aaron Donald. We know about the impact Aaron Donald's probably going to have in this game, like he has in every single game. He's like, we got to find a way to not allow Aaron Donald to wreck the game. Yeah, that's that's a strategy. I like that, especially when you're missing offensive linemen like we are. It's not an easy, it's not an easy task to find a way to not let Aaron Donald wreck the game. And according to Raheem Morris, when he talked about the Lions, he talked about, first off, you got to find a way to control their run game, all right, because that's what a lot of it is. They keep games close with their run game. We know that up until last week, at least. And he said, we got to find a way to pressure the quarterback in passing situations. Aaron Donald's nuts, all right? He's the best defensive player in football, and he's been that for years. And I think a lot of coaches would agree with that. Now, Anthony Lynn did say this is going to be an important week for our offensive tackles. He said, you want to, at all times, try to have four hands on Aaron Donald, which basically means like two guys, unless you have like three guys or four guys, and they're all kind of like sticking one hand on. But it basically means you want to have like two guys in contact with Aaron Donald at all times. I mean, they're going to send blitzes, according to Anthony Lynn, to try to get one-on-ones across the board. That way they can get Aaron Donald one-on-one, all right? They'll bring five guys just to try to get one-on-ones. And he said, we'll have to win our one-on-one -on -one matchups. That's that's a very big part of the game. Keep two hands on Aaron Donald as much as they possibly can. So for him, he believes it's going to be a big game for the tackles, probably because they're going to be on islands like late they've been. And they struggled, you know, the last couple of weeks. There's no new news right now about Taylor Decker coming back. All right, even if he does, right, it's still going to be super important. But there's no new news about that right now, which definitely stinks. And Lynn did say one thing this offense must do is make sure they continue to get the ball out on time. May see more tempo this week. I mean, it's kind of been the story of the week for the offense 
offense side of the ball expecting to see more tempo is number one you can keep the defense tired get the defense tired i mean the lions have struggled to find a rhythm if you can find a rhythm it makes it tougher to of course you know shift guys in and out unless you're substituting it makes it tough for a defense to substitute so they kind of have to stay with the players they get on the field so if you get matchups you like you can make it kind of tough you can get the defense tired okay it's just kind of up pace fast pace some of those big guys if you can kind of wear them down with that and really all of this is just trying to find rhythm that the lions have lacked of course hopefully this also means avoiding some of those dumb penalties because maybe we're overthinking it whatever it may be that attacking approach i think golf also brought this up but just just the mentality that we're attacking you know the defense dictating what the defense is going to be in not necessarily them dictating what we have to go in the defense shows something and we have to do this because of what the defense has done to us all game we want to make it so we dictate what the defense does and possibly finding some of that tempo like i said can dictate what the defense can be in if you can get up pace up tempo some no huddle looks if you can find a rhythm get on a little bit of a string there and all of a sudden defensively you're kind of just scrambling around and they're not able to put themselves in a spot where they can dictate what they want you to do offensively Hopefully minimize some of their super superstars from play to play get them tired a little bit wants to try to get drama allison more involved this week and they signed him to the active roster so that spot is filled by allison he said we do want to get him more involved this week we fall behind like we do it really limits some of the stuff that we want to do offensively plus he gives us size which the lions they could use some size out there right he gives us size and he gives us experience according to anthony lynn the, the guy has a lot of experience play experience but also slot and outside right he can play the x receiver position and he can slide into the slot was he better at the x yes but he has experience playing both and according to anthony lynn when he was asked about jared goff he said this he will target people that he trusts. And I thought that was just a really simple way to put it. We talked about the trust factor. One main area to me would be in certain situations, just showing a little bit more aggressiveness. All right, now I get it. The offense that we're running, you know, sometimes lacks that, but it's also about the trust. And according to Anthony Lynn, he's going to target people he trusts. That's what he says. I think that's a very very telling quote by Anthony Lynn. I, I think we've seen that. He's going to go to guys that he trusts to be in the right position, to be where they're supposed to be, to be on time. Dan Campbell said, we knew coming in this year, timing was so important with Jared Goff. Things staying on time, staying on schedule, things go well. When it comes to, hey, we're scrambling around, we're trying to make plays, things don't go that well with golf. We've seen the history, all right, at least right now where he is in his career. So keeping things on time is very important. The Lions have done pretty much the opposite of keeping things on time these last couple weeks specifically last week they did the exact opposite of how you keep things on time flags that ain't gonna work no run game that ain't gonna work and according to dan campbell guys ma or missing assignments that's not gonna work we did exactly what you would do if you're not trying to stay on schedule last week so those things need to be better but i thought that was a very telling quote so it's gonna be interesting to see what players we see on the field this week does benson become an active again all right, Allison, who, who does he go to this week? It'll be interesting to see who gets what snaps in this game. Now, Aaron Glenn, I love Aaron Glenn's answers. You know, he, he told us the toughest guy that he's had to go against. Man, I don't remember the dude's name. Isaac Brock. I got to look that guy up. Challenge him in the run game, the pass game. You know, when Randy Moss, when they were running football, I didn't got to worry about it because he wasn't going to do much there. Now, with the defense in the first half, he said it was probably our best defensive performance in just the first half. Okay, now the second half. Probably our best defensive performance to date. And I, you know what? I, I can see where he's coming from. I mean, really, you talk about the, the play that they gave up before half to give the field goal. Aside from that, it was a really well-played half. And even then, they still didn't allow them to get in the end zone, right? They still held them out of the end zone. They forced the field goal. They were really big time on situational third and short getting off the field. He said today is third down day. That's what Thursday usually is. But he was mixing in some red zone today because that's where the Lions, you know, they struggled a little bit last week is keeping them out of the end zone, specifically in the second half. But the first half was good. I mean, he gave up a touchdown on the first drive. And yet, I opportunity to get off the field there as well i think it was like a third and 10 they picked up and then they hit of course jalen on the sideline uh to chris evans but it was a really good first half from the lions and the second half got bad and according to aaron glenn he thought a big reason for things getting bad felt like human nature took over score is like the score is you try to do too much instead of just doing your job you try to do too much and you stop making you know the plays that you're supposed to make and i think that's where you know you see some of the missed tackles some of the missed assignments you're just trying to do a little bit too much that's what he talked about but we just need to continue to stay locked in and and do our job. Aaron Glenn actually thought this for the offense side, but this for the defense side. He said, you know, the keys is number one, do your job, like I said, and number two, win one on ones. You know, we got to win those individual one on one battles because the game is basically made up of one on one battles. And it is, if you think about it, D line versus O line. Can you beat your guy one on one if it's one on one? Sometimes two on one, but someone should be one on one. You know, linebackers, if they're in coverage, if they're stopping the run, right? Can you fill your lane? Can you cover the running back out the backfield? Can you cover the tight end or one on ones? Cornerback, one on one. Safety, you know, one on one with the quarterback, whether they're one on one or zone. 
whatever it is lines to play a lot of zone but those are the keys that he said defensively he's asked about playing matthew stafford and i actually have the clip here he talked about you know how matthew stafford does a really good job with his eyes looking things off you know kind of just moving defenders and he said for us the way that we have to try to manipulate that is kind of flip it on him right so matthew stafford you know you want to trust your eyes but stafford's looking one way you get guys moving out of place and he said for us it's about the film you have it's the film study it's knowing when they show certain things route concepts what you may see from this offense where things may be flowing instead of getting so locked on his eyes and pulled out of place and he said that's what happens when marcus williams had to pick on stafford the last time we played him so you go back 2020 they picked an account there was a flag defensively this is going to be the focus on film hey this is what they like to do you can get keep yourself in position better and you can kind of flip that on stafford because while he's looking guys off if you look someone off and think someone's going to that spot but the defender doesn't completely bite and he comes back to throw it then there's not really that time where he's looking back and said okay is this open you're kind of just firing you thought you looked him up and he take the shot so that's when interceptions can happen all right and hopefully the lions can get a few this week i think we can get one i think we can get one this week by the way tracy walker said if he picks it off he's gonna have stafford sign it all right, now that would be pretty funny. I'd say the biggest difference, it seems like on film between Goff and Stafford in this offense is that, you know, so Stafford is a lot more dropbacks. They're letting him get in the shotgun and drop back, move the defense, coverages, what he likes to see. It's less play action, he said, for whatever reason. Uh, obviously, a lot of that has to do with experience, as we got to hear from Kevin O'Connell, who is the offensive coordinator for the Rams, works with, who has worked with both quarterbacks. And he said the biggest difference is, look, they both have really good, the variations they can throw with, the accuracy, but the biggest difference to him is the experience. You know, Stafford's experience that he can draw on in the past, the understanding versus Goff, who's, you know, still a young player in positions that he's playing right now, right? We've talked about it. Stafford at 26 versus Goff at like 26, 27 years old. D uh, difference is between the two. And, you know, I think that's, you know, very very small way to sum it up of that's that's probably the biggest difference is you know one guy has experience he uh, understands defensive coverages he understands where to go with the football a little more he's more of a win now guy in golf who's a little bit younger and this needs to improve but he's still a little bit younger and he doesn't maybe have that experience that Stafford has to. for the Rams side of things I only got a couple of notes right like I said Raheem Morris is focused on time to run game pressure the quarterback because they played a lot of close games and Kevin O'Donnell really just was asked a lot of questions about Stafford and golf and the differences between the two I'm gonna throw this in there just because why not shots my man phantom for tagging me in this all right i just want to throw this picture up there all right now pro football focus you know whether you like it or not he played well last week the fact is jerry played well and he's played pretty well these last two weeks according to aaron glenn you know he's he's not perfect right now he's got a long way to go there's still a lot of things that he has not seen in the nfl which you'll see and i think he's probably partly talking about this week right he's faced a rookie quarterback and he's faced Kirk cousins which he said it by a lot of play action now you're facing Stafford is going to be in a lot of dropback situations. It's going to be a lot more, like Aaron Glenn may say, winning your one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah, this week's going to be a very tough test. And you know Matthew's probably going to come out and look to test them right away. So it's going to be a different field in these last two weeks. What he had to play against, with where he had to play, shout out to Jerry Jacobs making an early impression. But uh, I don't want to I don't want to give him too much. I don't want to butter him up too much because I know this week is... Uh, and I don't want to put up this defense too much because I know this week is, you know, like we talked about week one going to San Fran. It was like, okay, this is a challenge. And the Lions gave up 41 points. Now, not all of it was a defense. I think one of them was an offensive touchdown. A lot. They, they struggled. And it was like, okay, this is going to be a tough offense. But they've improved. Well, now you're on the road facing an offense and a guy paying his former team. So, yeah, it, it's... It's going to be tough. All right, now our show is about to start soon, so I'm just like, I can't really wait any longer. I try to wait as long as I could for this to come out, but I'll just throw up yesterday's injury report, and then tomorrow when we go back through it, I'll update you guys on things that we missed, okay? I just, I can't wait any longer, otherwise I'll be late for the show. All right, so yesterday, Whitworth, Terrell Lewis, both those guys were just resting, so I'm assuming they were back in practice today. They didn't have a lot of injuries on their injury report. Only guy aside from that was Sony Michelle dealing with a shoulder but the word was that he was expected to play on Sunday anyway. So maybe he came back and practiced. That would be the one to look for. Maybe he improved to limited because Sean McVay said it shouldn't affect his status for Sunday's game. But that's all that we know right now. I have no other news from the Rams. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to leave it right there. And tomorrow we'll update anything we missed from today. Thank you, Pat, for watching. See you soon. And I'm out.